Today I was sitting around remembering when I was a kid and first starting high school, I was kind of worried because I didn't know what kind of teachers I would have. I probably didn't need to worry about it because I'm pretty sure they were fairly typical. My algebra class was taught by this guy named Mr. Clyder. He was actually a pretty good teacher, but you couldn't help noticing that regardless of what shirt he was wearing, he wore the same pair of white canvas pants every single day, week in and week out. It was always my theory that this was because he drew on the blackboard with white chalk and so he could wipe his hands in his pants without anyone noticing. One day in the lunchroom, me and some of my classmates heard a rumor that Mr. Clyder had worn a different pair of pants that day and we were all looking forward to giving him a mountain of crap about it. It was not to be, though, because when Mr. Clyder walked into the room, he just raised his arm and said, Don't say a word. I've already sent 35 kids to detention for the next two weeks. So none of us said anything, and we proceeded to learn about the Pythagorean theorem. I had Miss Selby for English. She was kind of young for a teacher, but I really liked her class because we read what I considered to be highbrow literature, and I would pretend I was a character from The Great Gatsby, The Outsiders, or One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Towards the end of the semester, though, Miss Selvey would stop class about ten minutes early to let us start our homework, and then she would go over and sit with this group of popular girls and start talking about shopping, suntans, and going to the mall. This was sort of weird to see, because she would start using expressions like, and I was like, totally, oh, my, God. My history class was pretty bizarre, because Mr. Greb always made you feel like you just stepped into a time warp back to the year 1955. He always wore these well-polished wingtip shoes, and as he walked around the room, they would go clop, clop, clop. It was kind of hypnotizing. In a school of generally rambunctious kids, his class was always dead silent because even though he always seemed so calm, you also wondered if he would snap at any moment. I always believed the rumor that he had a loaded gun and a bottle of whiskey in his desk. To use a term that I learned in his class, Mr. Broly was an ectomorph, and even though the term is now outdated, I suppose I am too. Anyway, I particularly liked his class because he taught extensively about the Stanford Prison Experiment, the Milgram Obedience Experiment, and Dr. Calhoun's experiments on the overpopulation of rodents. All of these experiments, I thought, offered a glimpse into how humans could be capable of acting so badly towards each other, which is the exact sort of thing you'd be interested in hearing about if you went to a high school like mine. My art teacher, Mr. Daniels, taught me the basics of drawing, but also how to belch on command, and he liked to gross people out by suggesting that we all have a nose-picking contest. He was my favorite teacher in school. In my senior year, though, he was going through a divorce and rarely left his backroom office. The story has a happy ending, though, because a few years later I ran into him with his new girlfriend. She had underarm hair that was so long you could have braided it if you wanted to, but I'm not going to be judgmental about that. Mr. Santos was my guidance counselor and would suggest prospects for my future, which I don't believe that he thought was very bright. He would talk to me about colleges, and I would just sort of look out the window. The thing is, I'm pretty sure that I thought at the time that as soon as I graduated, I was going to embark on so many great adventures and have such an interesting life that I would never remember or care what had happened in high school anyway. That's what I thought at the time. I guess I was wrong.